जी सर सर आई एम प्रेजेंटिंग अ केस ऑफ मिस्टर विनय गोयल 65 ईयर ओल्ड मेल हु इज अ रेसिडेंट ऑफ जोधपुर ही इज अ शॉपकीपर बाय ऑक्यूपेशन माय पेशेंट प्रेजेंटेड विद कंप्लेंट्स ऑफ शॉर्टनेस ऑफ ब्रेथ व्हिच वाज प्रोग्रेसिव मच इज द एज एज 65 ईयर्स सर ओके a uh, progressively worsening shortness of breath since last 2 to 3 months and decrease in the urine output since last 2 to 3 months yes a uh, sir history of present illness uh, my patient is a known case of type 2 diabetes mellitus and hypertension uh, since last 15 years he was on oral hypoglycemic agents and on antihypertensive agents name of which they do not remember since the time of diagnosis according to the patient he had uh, un- he was under regular check up of his doctor and had a uh, con- and had a bp of around 150 to 160 mm of mercury at each visit which was around uh, once in 3 or 4 months and uh, the regular lab reports which he used to get showed a fasting glucose of around 140 to 160 mg per dl which was also done once in 6 months now the uh, the patient continued with his treatment when in the year 2017 that is after 10 years of diagnosis of his diabetes and hypertension patient had a episode of severe chest pain and was diagnosed as having acute coronary syndrome and underwent primary percutaneous intervention with two stents in situ the reports of that admission suggested a serum creatinine of 1.8 mg per dl that the samples were sent before the procedure the procedure was done and during the hospital stay nephrology consultation was taken during his stay the serum creatinine rose up to 2.5 to 3 mg per dl which he was told was because of the dye that has been used in the procedure the other parameters were also assessed during that hospital uh, hospitalization and the patient was told that he has some protein leakage in the urine and the other test which are done suggest that he has a kidney disease which is persisting from some longer time the patient was given appropriate medications and was discharged on discharge his serum creatinine was 2 mg per dl he was given a, a tablet telma 40 mg to be taken once daily and dietor 10 mg to be taken two, twice daily and antiplatelet and the statin in the form of lipicure d now among the other tests which was performed during the hospital stay were the eye examination in which he was told that he has some changes in his eyes which are likely due to his diabetes he was also to, uh, uh, on his heart function he was told that he has a uh, that his heart function is poor and the heart function ranges from 25 to 30% with this, this prescription the patient got discharged and he was advised to be under a regular follow up of a nephrologist which he did the routine investigations were done every 3 monthly after the discharge about after 6 months of this episode the serum creatinine remains stable but after 6 months it the the uh, the uh, uh, according to the patient the serum creatinine was on the rising trend and the medications were modified he was started on insulin for the sugar control instead of oral hypoglycemics and antihypertensive were also upgraded however the patient started complaining of decreased physical activity saying that he got tired even after doing routine daily activities and started noticing swelling in his feet he also started complaining of decreased appetite this persisted for about another 6 months and after about 1 year of this episode the patient started complaining of significant reduction in his physical activities and complained of shortness of breath even on routine activities the according to the patient he had lost a he had a significant loss of appetite and had loss of weight his insulin requirement decreased and the patient also had one or two episodes of sweating and palpitations saying that his sugars had gone low but bp but on regular follow up the blood pressure increased to about 170 mm of mercury systolic during his uh, regular visits to the doctor the patient then lost his follow up for another 6 months the uh, then after 6 months when the patient uh, followed up with a report because of his worsening symptoms the serums uh, the lab report suggested a serum creatinine of 5.5 to 6 mg per dl this phys- uh, he then consulted his doctor and his telma was stopped and two other antihypertensive drugs selenidipine and arpamine were added to his treatment the dose of data was also increased to 40 mg to uh, two times per day he was advised for dietary restrictions in the form of salt and water intake and he was uh, asked to avoid nuts and decrease his protein intake the patient after this episode the patient remained under regular follow up 
His other parameters were also assessed regularly, and changes in medications were done accordingly. He was also started on injections to improve his hemoglobin levels. He and his family were counselled regarding the need of dialysis soon because of the persisting symptoms of the patient. But the patient and the family uh, uh, did not comply to the same and said they needed time for the initiate to think about initiation of the RRT. In the year 2020, in the month of October, patient had a sudden episode of uh, shortness of breath and was admitted with the similar complaints. He was kept in ICU for further management. He was given higher doses of, uh, 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 of a medicine to increase his urine output and was kept in on oxygen support for two to three days. The patient had a urine output of about 1000 ml as stated by the patient and which increased to about 1500 ml with the help of the medications. He, uh, on investigations, he still had a poor heart function of around 20 to 25% and his serum creatinine had gone up to 10 mg per dl. He and his family were counseled for uh, initiation of the uh, dialysis and they opted for peritoneal dialysis. A catheter was placed in his abdomen in the OT and his son was trained for the procedure. After a wait of about 14 days, patient was started on peritoneal dialysis. His initial prescription consisted of two to three exchanges with 1.5% dextrose, two liter bags for four hours. According to the patient and his son, the general condition of the patient gradually started improving. His appetite improved and he started gaining weight, but all, and also his insulin requirement increased. With two exchanges of 1.5% dextrose, the patient had a drain output of about 700 ml in, uh, in 24 hours and had a urine output of about uh, 800 uh, uh, and had a urine output of about 800 to 900 ml in 24 hours. With this prescription, the patient did well for about six months. His subsequent lab report suggested improvement in his serum creatinine levels, which had dropped down to five, uh, five milligram per dl. His breathlessness improved and his physical activities also improved. The patient, as he started feeling better, again got lost to the follow-up and continued with the same prescription. However, after uh, his follow-up report suggested a renal stable renal function, and hemoglobin of about 9 to 10 mg per dl with no symptoms of shortness of breath on exhaust. After about six months, the patient started experiencing similar symptoms uh, as in the past, like difficulty in walking, shortness of breath after about walking one kilometer, and decrease uh, climbing of flight of stairs, and decrease and also notice swelling in his legs. He also started having shortness of, uh, subsequently, he started having shortness of breath even on routine activities. Uh, sir, should I? Hello? Continue, you finish your okay, history. Sir. Okay, sir. Then he had sudden episode, again he had an episode of sudden shortness of breath and had to be admitted in ICU. This, this event took place in January 2022 and was intubated for respiratory distress. He was told that his lungs were flooded with water and he had high BP of 180 millimeter of mercury. Patient was given two to three sessions of hemodialysis after which the patient's general condition improved and he was extubated. In this admission, he was counseled regarding the need, future need of he, uh, hemodialysis or the change of um, or the change of his PD prescription. He also underwent ultrasound of his arms to look for the feasibility of the AV fistula and the patient was told that he should not allow anyone to take samples from his right arm as, at a, as, uh, as the fistula in future would be made in his right arm. He was advised for change in his PD prescription and was advised to do exchanges of 2.5% dextrose, 2 liter bags at three exchanges per day, or do and also a, uh, also do night dwell with icodextrin. His serum creatinine at this at, uh, around this time was about 8 to 10 millimeter of mercury. At this episode, his urine output had decreased to about 600 ml per day, and he had uh, and uh, the uh, repeat echo still showed a poor function of the heart that was 25%. The dose of the dis uh, diuretic were increased and also the antihypertensives and insulin were adjusted according to the current parameters of this admission. The patient was discharged. The patient tried the above prescription but said that he uh, but became non-compliant due to uncontrolled sugars and discomfort and trouble sleeping at night because of the filling. So the patient left the night uh, night dwell and also came back to 1.5% dextrose because he had uncontrolled sugars. He continued with, uh, he increased the exchanges from two to three exchanges of four hours with 1.5% dextrose. And with 2.5%, they used to do one exchange 
either once or twice weekly as per the status of the patient as per the status of the patient they themselves have set a weight of about 72 to 73 kg and change the prescription uh, the use of 2.5% dextrose according to the change in his weight uh, this persisted for 6 months when again the patient was admitted in our hospital with difficulty in uh, uh, the patient 6 uh, months later patient started having difficulty in breathing on exertion since last 2 months which caused limitation of his physical activities also he could not sleep straight and had to use two to three pillows for the same then uh, 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 the patients had a very limited physical activity at home the the family then went to a went for a vacation to rishikesh where his symptoms got uh, worsened and he did and his condition deteriorated he was immediately admitted in a nearby hospital where he was treated with iv diuretics and iv antibiotics the son did two to three rapid exchanges on the day of admission and then the patient was brought to our hospital in in the condition of uh, 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 in the condition of shortness of the breath the patient was not maintaining saturation he had a saturation of 86% with 15 liters oxygen to the nasal mask he was unable to lie down and had a bp of 180 by 100 mm of mercury he was immediately shifted to icu for the further management and was managed with iv diuretics and niv support His lab investigation suggested metabolic acidosis with hyperkalemia. Considering his current situation, femoral HD catheter was secured, and the patient was started on hemodialysis. After three or four sessions with excessive ultrafiltration, patient's general condition improved and was gradually weaned off from the NIV support. After three days of hospital admit, um, after after hospitalization, patient started maintaining saturation on room air. his lab reports at that on, on at the time of admission were 15 g uh, serum creatinine of 15 g per dl and serum potassium of 6.4 this 2d echo showed low ef of 20 to 25% also the patient had rising propyl from 500 to 6000 to 14887 which were take done every 6 hours there were no uh, acute changes in the ecg cardiology consultation was seen and urgent coronary angiography was advised to the patient During his hospital stay, the patient had a urine output of only 100 ml, despite uh, diuretics. The attendants and patient were counselled for switch to hemodialysis or change in the prescription of his peritoneal dialysis, and also to undergo coronary angiography uh, as a acute coronary syndrome was suspected. But the uh, a patient and the attendant refused the uh, coronary angiography, saying that the contrast would again harm their kidneys and would they would like to take another opinion. the patient took lama from a hospital saying they would like to have another opinion as well according to the patient he never had any episodes of pain abdomen with cloudy drain output or fever uh, 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 during uh, during his two years of uh, peritoneal dialysis there was no problem in draining peritoneal fluid and the peritoneal drain uh, uh, drain output was always more than uh, was around 600 to 700 in each of his prescriptions there was no pain during intro there was no need of blood transfusions uh, during his entire episode, uh, entire duration of the illness there was no complaint of low back ache or pathological fractures or bone pain the uh, 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 on asking the patient the uh, the patient told that he had never got his pet test done because the patient was doing well and so did not uh, find a need to get a pet test done so. <coughs> okay so after history now what is your total diagnosis provisional diagnosis um sir uh, my provisional diagnosis would be uh, that uh, the patient uh, the, uh, the diabetes or uh, the patient uh, type 2 diabetes mellitus with diabetic neuropathy essential hypertension coronary with artery diabetes artery. nephropathy sir cryopathy actually because okay. the patient had eye changes as well he has heart okay, now, now you don't give any explanation just give me okay. the diagnosis Okay. So, cryopathy. What cryopathy? Sir, uh, uh, sir, nephropathy, uh, hmm. retinopathy, and uh, cardio, cardiac involvement. Sir. Nephropathy, retinopathy, and cardiac, cardiac involvement. involvement. Yes. Sir. When we say cryopathy, usually what does that mean? Sir, microvascular and macrovascular. Sir, triopathy means neuropathy as well, sir. Yes. So when we say triopathy, triopathy usually it is retinopathy uh, and nephropathy and, and neuropathy. Neuropathy. So, but in addition, patient has got a cardiac involvement. What is the evidence of cardiac involvement? Ah, uh, sir, the patient. Ah, uh, 
coronary artery the patient had coronary artery disease and underwent stenting which year sir 2017 sir okay so patient has got a cardio uh, coronary artery disease cad with yes, ptca sir. yes sir. and stenting two stents two stents yes sir two stents in ct sir Okay. This was after ten years of diagnosis of his diabetes and hypertension, sir. So, uh, any evidence of uh, uh, dilated cardiomyopathy at that time? Mm, no, sir. Or sir, at any time? No, sir. Record, sir. We didn't get the old records, but uh, the, the whatever the but history. Now you said twenty-five percent was the ejection fraction. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The patient uh, stated at every time. He was hospitalized. He was told that he has a low ejection fraction of twenty to twenty-five percent. Oh, so that that is not a part of diagnosis. Yes, sir. I was saying, sir, coronary artery disease okay, so, with so low ejection fraction. Okay, so give me the complete fraction. diagnosis. So coronary artery disease with low ejection fraction, twenty to twenty-five yeah. percent. Post PTCA, CKD stage five D on peritoneal yeah, dialysis. Can, low ejection fraction is not the diagnosis. Then it is actually cardiomyopathy. Okay, sir. 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 Okay, sir
सब फ्लूड नॉट एडिक्वेट फ्लूड यस यस सॉरी सर सर नॉट एडिक्वेट सर हाई ट्रांसपोर्टर सर व्हाट आर यू डूइंग व्हाई आर यू कंफ्यूजिंग सर which which page okay that i will come to later i just to, i am to the strict case of your diagnosis ha uh, don't make this this blunder it will be a, it will be a major blunder in in, in exam if you say high transporter means that he is absorbing sir he what? Uh, high, sir the exchange of urine creatinine is good but the volume exchange is not good because the concentration is achieved very rapidly so the fluid removal is not that effective yes so that is high transport high transport okay now you are right then so what you have to mention about the uh, type of the transport that you have mentioned now okay. with good residual function or poor residual function or no residual function again these every, so, in every cpd patient you have to see these okay. things so what will you say now with good preserved that is not preserved residual function that is yes, a term sir, yes sir with with preserved uh, residual function good residual function so we all we had a residual function sir uh, initially had a residual function of around 1 liter but currently at this episode before this episode he had a residual renal function of 500 ml but still 500 ml is a very very good yes, urine yes, output so good yes sir good result good residual yes yes sir okay so any other thing or di your diagnosis is complete uh, yes sir uh, high transport he required ventilatory support also yes sir uh, this time a non in uh, non invasive ventilator sir was put on nid support but in the january 2022 episode he was ventilated for two days but, but not this time not this okay, time sir, sir. he uh, put on an iv support with fio2 of 100% and, and the next day he was put on high flow oxygen and after three what days about the, the, what about the angiography if you sir, know the angiography findings sir they did not undergo angiography uh, we first we repeatedly counseled them because he had a rising propy and the symptoms of chf but the patient and the family refused they said that uh, they would uh, uh, the residual urine output will decrease because of the dye the initially also uh, matlab they had a myth in their mind that if the contrast would be given the patient will deteriorate so they took lama from a hospital and did not get angiography done you are sure that angio was not done sir this time it was not done yes sir it was in our hospital only. it was not done sir they took lama before we could uh, we were pestering them for this but they did not uh, allow us to get it done and they took lama where was where was the cpd started sir in dangaram hospital sir so okay. actually it was your patient only sir uh, he was yeah, admitted yeah, under I'm, I'm, i don't want that okay sir, Coincidentally, uh, it happened that yes, sir. Okay. So now, now what were uh, what was your discharge advice? Sir, we had counselled the patient to increase the uh, uh, tonicity of the fluid to two point five percent. Do more exchanges, like three to four exchanges, and do a night dwell with icodextrin for effective fluid removal, sir. If to be continued on peritoneal dialysis. Okay. So now this is your total diagnosis. Okay. so angio yes. was not done okay yes. and plus uh, you have continued the patient on and advised the patient on capd or you, did yes. you advise hemodialysis yes sir we advised the patient to undergo hemodialysis and uh, get the catheterization done because the uh, during our hospital stay the patient just had a urine output of 100 ml or even lesser uh, on the days the hemodialysis was done so we were not sure whether the uh, patient yes. will have increased urine output so we counseled them uh, about uh, uh, Internal catheter and to go for hemodialysis okay. because of so the now, recurrent fluid overload. Now, okay. We'll discuss later. Come to physical examination. So in physical examination, my my patient was well built. Um, sit uh, uh, was well built, sitting comfortably. Uh, the weight of the patient was seventy five kgs on admission and height was one sixty five centimeter, giving a BMI of twenty four point five kg per meter square. 
Uh, the pulse rate was uh, 90 per minute regular hypervolumen. All peripheral pulses were palpable. The pressure of 180 by 80 millimeter of mercury taken in right arm supine position. Uh, the uh, PP of 170 by 80 millimeter of mercury in left arm supine position. And in legs, the BP was 190 by 100 in uh, right leg and uh, 190 by 100 in left leg. The respiratory rate was 22 per minute of thoracic pattern. The JVP was raised. There was no pallor, ictus, clubbing, cyanosis, lymphadenopathy, and um, no peripheral edema. In the systemic examination, the respiratory system, on inspection, the, the chest was bilaterally symmetrical. There were no spar marks, no intercostal recession, and no lumps, uh, and no bulges seen. The respiratory pattern was thoracoabdominal. Uh, on palpation, uh, there was no tender, tenderness. On percussion, Dull note was uh, felt over infrascapular and the interscapular region. The, the other regions were resonant. On auscultation, there were bilateral vesicular sounds pre uh, present with bilateral capitations and bronchi over the uh, over interscapular region, infrascapular and the interscapular region. In the cardiovascular system, the precordium was normal. Epics was seen in the six intercostal space and no other pulses were um, visible. On palpation, the position of the apex were confirmed to be in the six intercostal space. On auscultation, S1, S2 was normal. There was no murmur and no pericardial rub was heard. In per abdominal examination, on inspection, the abdomen was distended and all quadrants were moving equally with respiration. A catheter was seen, placed and secured in a belt around the umbilicus. Uh, the exit site was bandaged, so I could not examine it. Uh, there were hyperpigmented scars present uh, over the abdomen. And on palpation, there was uh, no organomegaly and it was non-tender. On auscultation, the bowel sounds were present. In the CNS examination, the patient was conscious, oriented to time, place, and person. The higher mental functions were normal. There was no focal neurological deficit, no cranial nerve palsy. Power was 5 by 5 in all limbs. Uh, among the reflexes, uh, ankle reflex was decreased, whereas the knee reflex was normal and uh, uh, in, on fundus examination, there was a bilateral non proliferative diabetic retinopathy present. Okay. So, now, and after examination, any change in total final diagnosis or it is same? Uh, so, it's the same, same protocol. So the patient was in fluid overload. So. Okay. So now a patient who has been put on, uh, why was he put on CAPD first off? That is the so, first question. Sir, um, uh, probably because the patient had a low ejection fraction and also the patient has a preserved renal, uh, uh, residual renal function. He had a urine output of 1000 at the time, 1000 ml at the time he was initiated on PD. And because he had a low ejection fraction from the very beginning, that is why he was probably offered peritoneal dialysis over hemodialysis. Okay, that is the action. We're good. So, in fact, you you know what is uh, uh, what is PD first policy? Yes, sir. Uh, the PD first policy is the is that of acute PD or the urgent start PD, sir. In which it is now recommended that uh, uh, the patient should be taken up on peritoneal dialysis if there is uh, if if the patient does not require dialysis for at least fourteen days since the insertion of the peritoneal catheter. And the patient, uh, uh, th this allows the preservation of the uh, vessels and the preservation of the residual renal function. The patient, uh, the PD catheter is put in, and uh, the uh, and after the uh, after a gap of 14 days, the patient is started on PD, and the caregivers and the patient are given training uh, under a well setup of for the initiation of peritoneal dialysis. So, in fact, PD first policy means the first dialysis should be peritoneal dialysis yes, in every patient. Why? So, because yes, what policies most of the countries now are adopting actually, right? We have in Thailand, we have in uh, Hong Kong, we have in China, now even started in India, uh, in, in South, they are present now. Uh, there is a national dialysis program also uh, of by government of India. So they are going to promote PD now. So PD first policy, what are the advantages of, and main advantage of PD first policy, right? You said is the preservation of residual renal function. Yes, sir. That is the most important. Second is the intrementor dialysis. Yes, that, that you can always do with uh, yes, PD. Yes, sir. 
you know na what is incremental dialysis yes sir we can increase the dose slowly for the uh, yes, starting maybe one bed one the... bed per day then yes. uh, gradually yes. increasing yes. to two beds per day three beds per day so incremental dialysis is much easier and um, helpful for preservation of residual renal function why you are concerned about residual renal function in a in a, a ctd patient so because the middle molecule clearance is more is most effective with the residual renal function as compared to hemodialysis and the peritoneal dialysis and the penusa reanalysis study has also proven that uh, increase in the residual renal function of even 250 ml decreases the relative risk of death by about 16% so there are many studies that prove that uh, the patient survival is better on uh, if the patient has a residual renal function yes and a 1 ml gfr residual renal function 1 uh, ml of gfr residual renal function is equal to one bed of pd so that's why it in fact residual renal function is very important now what are the uh, advantages of pd over hemodialysis i am asking you very very basic and practical questions i will not ask you much details what are the advantages of peritoneal dialysis over hemodialysis sir so the uh, the advantages of peritoneal dialysis first again is uh, is that the uh, uh, renal function is preserved for a longer time as compared to the hemodialysis second there is no exposure to the synthetic materials like uh, the dialyzer membrane and the tubing which is done in the hemodialysis third there are no intradialytic episodes of hypotension which causes uh, which are responsible for increased cardiovascular uh, mortality uh, it is more physiological Uh, because uh, uh, it is more physiological, sir. The patient can continue with their routine activities, and uh, uh, sir, uh, the uh, blood, uh, 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 sir, uh, also the uh, the electrolyte imbalance is less, sir. Which the uh, hemoglobin. What is the most important advantage actually from sir, patient point of view? So it is that he is he is has got freedom. Freedom, yes. Sir. Freedom to move, freedom to travel. Yes, number one, number two, control of the treatment is in the hand of patient. Patient. If patient is educated and intelligent, he can easily be trained. Yes. So patient can have train the train tra uh, treatment in his own hands. He is free to move. You, do you know uh, a PD patient can travel anywhere in the world? Yes, sir. They can take their bags. They can take yes. their setup. No, no. The company, the company will survive them the bags there. Whether you are in USA, whether you are in Europe, so at same rate, not higher rates. So that the freedom, freedom to move. Then other, uh, what are the other other? Uh, uh, you are not dependent on any family members. Yes, sir. You can have your flexibility of the treatment is there. Yes, sir. there is there is no much issue if you delay by one hour or you do one hour early or you even miss one bed then also yes. it can be uh, you can still manage then anemia management yes. did you say that yes anemia, i just said last uh, better, point better, point better point. control because it is a Talking totally bloodless procedure yes. hypotremia in fact hyperkalemia is less commonly seen in yes. pd than in hemodialysis hemodialysis and uh, second is this uh, Uh, what about um, <coughs> this uh, bone problems sir bone uh, sir m yeah. M B D. sir it is sir it is also bet, uh, better better so it is more preserved in uh, hemodialysis than uh, in fact uh, it is other way around it is the actually a dynamic bone disease which yes, is seen sir. more common with peritoneal dialysis yes then other is why do you say that it is more physiological than hemodialysis one you said is the membrane other things so other thing is that the uh, the membrane uh, so so the glucose solution or the solutions that are used are more uh, and it is a continuous dialysis so it does not give stress to the patient like there is no a uh, major hemodynamic changes if you are doing 24 hour dialysis Yes. then it is working like a normal kidney yes. because normal kidney is working 24 hours yes. where a hemodialysis you are doing only for 4 hours 3 times a day maximum or maybe 8 hours a day 8 hours a week 
but it is a more physiological okay so that that is another advantage but the it has to be we that's why the research is going on to make the fluid more physio, physiological as much as possible by by how uh, how you are making it more physiological sir have you heard of triple chamber ed beds i think this is very important from exam point of view some examiner might show you the triple chamber if i am there i may take the bed with me for the exam okay, and ask what is the triple chamber uh sir what happens to the glucose if it is pre mixed and what happens to the glucose if it is not pre mixed how do you sterilize the bags sir the bag the glucose in the bag the they uh, they actually undergo degradation and they form the glucose degradation products and yeah. they produce the advanced glycation uh, end products sir. so which yeah. are uh, which actually causes oxidative stress in the body and are harmful for the body so to avoid the generation of the glucose degradation products the ph of the fluid is uh, kept at a the ph of 5.5 and the uh, the bags are sterilized in such a manner that the glucose is not uh, gets converted into the gdps and there is another bag of bicarbonate uh, which yeah. is connect there are two chamber bags sir. so uh, so the ph is kept alkal so, uh, acidic it is, it is all one bag only in that one yes, bag so only we chamber. have that seal by pressing that only you can that seal is open so then this bicarbonate powder gets mixed then and, uh, uh plus 25% dextrose or uh, uh, that also that's mixed so that's how the freshly prepared bag is used that's why it is more but what about the another thing which is in the speedy fluid which again is not physiological which is not physiological sir uh, so the lactic acid 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 the ph is less sir ph is acidic Huh. Again, that that again causes uh, peritoneal uh, damage. Damage, yes. Okay. So that that's how the we are the research is going on for uh, improvement in that is called actually in one of the uh, uh, company bad is called physionil. Physio. Phys what about what is, have you heard of neutrinil? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What what is what is in neutrinil? Because you know, in exam, you will not get that much time to prepare. But sir, here, you I know mean, the case. You know the case beforehand that a PD patient is there. Yes. Sir. That is, you should know what is neutrinil. Sir, it uh, it has added amino acids, sir. Okay. Amino acid. How many bags of neutrinil are used per day? Sir, one bag. One point. Uh, Okay, so never one bag. only never, one bag, sir. Only one bag is to be used. Yes, what is what is uh, icodextrin? So icodextrin is a, a polymeric uh, monohydrate glucose, sir, which uh, it, it does not get rapidly absorbed in the lymphatics, and so uh, it remains for a longer time in the peritoneal cavity, and thus it uh, it it, is, it causes more fluid removal and uh, more exchanges as compared to the dextrose solution. Plus, it does not cause hyperglycemia, which may, uh, which causes, uh, uh, which impairs the ultrafiltration in the peritoneal patient, dialysis patients. So, it is a basically proloid osmotic agent. Okay. So, number one is that it is a proloid osmotic agent. And what is the molecular weight of hydrodestrin? Just seven. Uh, seven. Is it high polyethylene? It is molecular. It is polymer. Sir, it is hypertonic, sir. It is hypertonic, sir. Yes, so its molecular weight is higher. Yes, and what about it? Is a glucose polymer? You yes, mentioned that. Yes, sir. Okay. What is the, the side polymer. effect? Main. What What is the main side effect of hypertestin? Uh, uh, what is the uh, metabolic product of hypertestin? Sir, lactate. No. Oh, yes, sir. Have you uh, heard of uh, maltose? Sir, 
Ma yes, Maltose. Maltose gets absorbed. Maltose. It can cause yes. skin rash, uh, then yes. uh, various, yes. uh, 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 yes. it, mainly skin, skin rash. Yes. What, what do you think is the duration of action of hypodestin? Suppose once you prescribe hypodestin, how long this hypodestin will work? Sir, uh, how long it takes to work, sir? Like how long it, it will work? How many hours you will prescribe? For how many sir, hours the dwell will be? You will allow this sir, dwell. Six to eight hours, sir. I could extend night. Usually use for the night dwell. So six to eight hours. What will happen if I use it for 10 hours, 12 hours? Sir, uh, then it causes a. Uh, uh, so it can be given up to 10, 10 hours, sir. But. Uh, Sir, it can be given up to 10 hours because it does not get absorbed to the lymphatics easily. So it remains in the peritoneal dialysis and it will keep on uh, absorbing the fluid answer, from answer the... Answer to this question is that it will it will have a linear relationship. Okay. It will continue to get absorbed. So there is nothing like that. If it, Even you can continue to it for 10 hours, 12 hours, it will continue to work. But only thing is that you, do, you are not bothered only about the water. You are also... Uh, you have to but worry about... Can't... Urea and creatine, clearance of crystal, uh, um, this uh, uh, urea and creatine. Okay, so that's why. But it it can continue for ten hours, twelve hours, fourteen hours. Okay. Now, what is break-in period? Sir, break-in period is sir. Uh, uh, sir, from the start of the. Uh, uh, sir, break-in period is when you insert the catheter till the start of the dialysis. So we keep uh, usually about two weeks. The catheter is uh, kept in place uh, and allow the tract to mature. And then after 14 days, the peritoneal dialysis is started. So that is the break-in period. Okay. So break-in period is actually, what are the advantage of break-in period? Sir, uh, the main advantage is to avoid the peritonitis, sir. Uh, and uh, no, 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 peritonitis uh, is not a matter because it is a mainly it is a because to avoid the leakage. Sorry, it's a peritoneal leak service because the so, catheter is so just leak, placed for the leak. It is mainly meant for leakage, yes. Yes. And the, let the exit side heal completely. Yes. Sir. Basically, you want exit side to heal. Okay. Now, you tell me what is PET test? So PET test is the peritoneal equilibrium test, which is performed to know the transport uh, status of the patient. So uh, in the standard uh, PET test, 2.5% uh, uh, dextrose is used, two, uh, two liter bag installed for four hours. And then the samples are taken at, uh, the, per uh, the peritoneal fluid samples are taken at zero hour, two hour, and the four hour. And uh, uh, and at the second and at the two hours, the plasma uh, the, the the plasma sample is also taken, and then we uh, take the ratios of D by P urea, D by P creatine, and D by P glucose. And it is done after uh, the uh, after the entire fluid has been removed. <clears throat> Have you done PET test yourself? No, sir. So we don't do PD in our center, sir. So. We don't have practical experience with the peritoneal dialysis. What is modified PET test? Sir, in modified PET test, is, it is basically used to uh, diagnose the ultrafiltration failure. So in modified PET test, instead of 2.5% uh, uh, dextrose, we use 4.25% dextrose for one hour. And after that, the ultrafiltration, if the drain volume is less than 400 ml, and there are no, and we have rolled out the outflow, um, uh, the leaks, the pericatheter leaks, and the, um, uh, uh, the uh, uh, that outflow failure. Then we can diagnose uh, it as uh, having an ultrafiltration failure. Which 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 concentration is used in modified PET test? That's four point two five percent. Okay, and how much should be the drain volume? So less uh, if it is more than four hundred. That means there is no ultrafiltration failure after we have ruled out the pericatheter leak and the out outflow obstruction, sir. Okay. So what, what are the various types of ultrafiltration failures? Sir, there are three types of ultrafiltration failure. The first is the high transporter ultrafiltration failure type one, in which the um, in which there is a, uh, uh, there is rapid exchanges. Uh, the, the there is increase in the peritoneal uh, 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 
so there is increase in the effective peritoneal surface area because of the uh, recurrent peritonitis it usually occurs after the initiation of pd for more than 2 to 3 years and there is rapid equilibration of the glucose concentration so there is uh, effective ultra filtration is low then the other is the ultra filtration uh, failure type 2 which happens in the low transporters in which there is very low clearance of the solute and uh, removal of the water and then third is the uh, ultra uh, aquaporin uh, that is uh, yes uh, aquaporin deficiency and the lymphatic uh, obstruction uh, yes sir aquaporin deficiency in which the water uh, there is uh, the aquaporins are not there so the water removal is uh, not good i think you read these all four types it was you were confusing this answer okay better you read or repetition failure now what are the non infectious complication of pd sir hernias then uh, uh, hydrothorax then uh, sir uh, uh, extra uh, this extra peritoneal uh, sclerosis eps sir uh, what is eps uh, uh sir e uh, encapsulating peritoneal uh, sclerosis sir okay that is a very rare complication so don't yes. risk that you are um, missing so many other complications sir, metabolic complications uh, first metabolic and most important thing is hyperglycemia hyperglycemia then hypotremia hypotremia is seen in how many percentage of patients hypokalemia sir hmm. sir uh, 10 to 30 30 to 35% 30. Percent. so patient can have extreme weakness then hypotension sometimes can occur in these patients but then what other hyperlipidemia can occur hyperlipidemias hypertrichosis bad pain why bad pain occurs so back pain can occur because of the extra dwell volume uh, so the large dwell volumes that yes. can cause the compression all the time there is a 2 to 2.5 liter fluid in the abdomen yes so, so patient is having all the time low doses low doses yes so other high, why hydrothorax sir hydrothorax is also because of the increased fill volume that can cause hmm sir uh, increased uh, uh, increased fill volume sir no why why there will be hydrothorax uh, sir uh, there is a uh, defect sir, in the defect uh, in the diaphragm yes sir they in, they enter the diaphragm and So, so there is a defect in the diaphragm. That's why the fluid le leads into the pleural cavity. A pleural cavity. Yes, and it is seen more on right or left side. Sir, right side. So more on the right side. Right. How will you manage a patient of hydrothorax? Sir, uh, uh, there can be surgical uh, management, sir, or uh, we can uh, uh, we can uh, cause the peritone. Uh, so, so talc, sir, uh, oxy tetracycline can be infused. and video uh, uh, assisted proposcopy bad bad sir and repair bad. repair of the defect defect that is a permanent solution vat otherwise all this in tal to betadine uh, and, and, and the tetracyclines okay how will you diagnose simply simple test Sir, how will you diagnose, sir? Hydrothorax. Uh, sir, uh, uh, sir, if we take out the fluid uh, from the pleural uh, uh, cap, so the uh, uh, sir uh, on the the pleural fluid and the uh, should have a higher concentration of the glucose. Ah, so very high glucose. Very What high glucose. Think, how much is the concentration of glucose in the fluid? Sir, how much is, is the blood? It is two third of the uh, plasma, sir. No, you first you answer my question. How much is the blood sugar, normal blood sugar? Sir, uh, it is uh, sir uh, less than two hundred, one twenty to two hundred, sir. No, normal blood sugar. Two hundred, sir. So one, hmm? one, one. Ah, uh, no, normal, normal blood sugar, normal. On an average, any person having normal blood sugar, what will be the range? Sir, ninety uh, to one twenty, sir. Okay, 
no what is the what is the glucose concentration in a bad sir it is 1.5 uh, uh, sir 1 2.5 sir uh, the glucose concentration in a bad sir hmm. uh, sir sir 1200 uh, 1200 mg sir per day sir First, you tell me what are the three three strength. What are the three strength sir, of sugar? Sir, one point uh, five. Sir, one point five, four point five, four point two five. And sir. four point two five. Huh? Two five. Four point two five, two point five, one point five. So in a in a two point five uh, percent bad, how yes, much sir. will will be the blood sugar? How 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 much will be the sugar concentration? Sir. Is there any difficulty in answering this question? It is a simple mathematics. Uh, sir, twenty-two. Sir, twenty-two grams. Sir, twenty-two. No, uh, why? Why you are saying twenty-two when it is two point five? And why are you saying twelve hundred? When why are you saying twelve hundred when it is one point five? One, one point fifteen hundred, sir. Fifteen hundred. Five hundred. Twenty-five hundred milligram. Per deals. Percent. Percent. So, if it is four point two five, then how much is the sugar? Sir, forty two, forty two hundred. Forty two hundred. Forty two fifty. Forty two fifty. Yes. Have you heard of anybody having a sugar of forty two fifty milligram percent? No, sir. So, that that is the fluid which you are putting in the abdomen. Yes, sir. And that's why I I ask you first, how much is the blood sugar value? Sir, eighty to one twenty. Eighty to one twenty milligram percent. Yes, sir. So now you can examine how much you can now rise how much sugar will be absorbed. Yes, sir. Across such a big gradient. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. But why why the blood sugar doesn't uh, go to four thousand? Uh, sir, because sir, uh, sir, because of the equilibration, sir. Hmm. Why why we are using dextrose in a PD fluid? Sir, because it's a hypertonic and it will uh, cause the uh, and uh, it will cause the fluid removal up, uh, across the concentration gradient, sir. Because what is that? What is that called? What is that process called? Sir, diffusion. Sir. Osmosis. Yes, osmosis. Osmosis. Okay, so osmosis. So that's how it will draw water. Yes, that's why the it with it, it that's diluted within half an hour. Yes, sir. So maximum ultrafiltration in what, what what time? Sir, thirty minutes. Uh, sir, yes. usually it takes uh, thirty minutes and two point five percent, and it reaches a maximum uh, uh, till sixty minutes, and then uh, slows down uh, uh, after ninety minutes. Who is the father of uh, CAPD in the world? Who 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 invented CAPD? What is the name of the catheter? CAPD sir, catheter. The Tenchkov, sir. Tenchkov and Shek. Sir, huh? sir Tenchkov and Shek. Uh, Tenchkov. Tenchkov catheter. Yes, sir. Tenchkov, sir. But who who described first time PD? CAPD. Who put CAPD in clinical use? Have you heard of Popovich and Montreff? Sir. Okay. So you read the history of CAPD. Who uh, who uh, start, uh, invented a PET test? Sir, uh, sir, I'm not ready with these questions. I will read Demo them. 
read the name of trodosti trodosti Okay. What are the causes of uh, uh, blood stain return? Sir, causes of hemorrhage return. Hemorrhage return, sir. It would, sir. Uh, it could be peritonitis, sir. It could be uh, trauma. Then it could be uh, this encapsulating peritoneal sclerosis. Uh, sir. Uh, uh, malignancy and uh, what can can it happen in a polycystic kidney disease patient sir cyst rupture yes so cyst rupture cyst can rupture be the can cause of hemorrhage can it in it, it happen in a female during menses Uh, this I'm not aware. It can this is an important question. So hemorrhage return can occur during endometriosis. Okay, sir. Okay. Then if patient is on uh, ecosprene, sometimes ah, so ecosprene antiplatelet drugs. So antiplatelet drugs, so even okay. trivial trauma, small trauma, some just uh, small by trauma. yes, that yes, can sir. cause uh, hemorrhage return. Yes, sir. Then, of course, Marie Nancy. What is the role of uh, estimation of CA125 levels in PD? Sir, CA125 level can give an estimate of, uh, uh, it can tell us about the mesothelial uh, function, sir. Mesothelial function, sir. Okay, that is a very good answer because this tells us about the healthy mesothelium. We require has a healthy mesothelium for, for PD. If CA uh, uh, 120 levels are uh, high, that is a good sign actually. Yes. Sir. That means mesothelial function is good. How many layers are there, there in PD? PD sir, there are six layer? layers, sir. Okay. Six layers, sir. So first is the sternum capillary layer, which is uh, uh, overlying the endothelium. Then there is the capillary endothelium layer itself. Then is the uh, uh, endothelial uh, basement membrane. Then is the interstitium. Then is the capillary. Uh, then is the fluid uh, overlying the mesothelium, and then the stagnant fluid layer overlying the mesothelium. Six layers. Okay. So, what is Admet's study, and what is Canusa study? Sir, uh, the Canusa study. The first Canusa study was uh, performed in 1996, and in which they showed that uh, the higher KT by B. It uh, is, uh, has a more uh, 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 survival patients, uh, better patient survival, and uh, even a drop of uh, 0.1 KT by B can lead to uh, uh, increased relative risk of death by six. Uh, then there was Canusa reanalysis, which took place in 2001, which showed that the impact, the advantage of the residual renal function over and uh, along with the KT by B in. Uh, in, in, in predicting survival of patient in peritoneal dialysis. Then in the edemics, uh, sir, uh, 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 in, in the edemics, sir, we had two groups. Uh, edemics was performed in 2003, sir. Uh, there were two groups. One was the control group, uh, in which uh, two liter, 2.5% uh, exchanges, were, uh, four daily exchanges were done. And then there was an intervention group, sir, in which we had increased the uh, KT by B, uh, the exchanges were increased to 2.5 to 3 liters, and two uh, KT by B were compared 1.7 versus 2. KT by B was compared for the survival of the patient. So it was shown that higher the KT by B, uh, that there was no difference in the survival between 1.7 and the 2. So basically, they uh, studied the platinum. Uh, what is hemo study? Hemo study, sir. Hmm. Okay, uh, you tell me what is the uh, obesity paradox in dialysis? 
sir uh, usually the higher uh, usually higher bmi is associated with uh, more complications however in uh, hemodialysis patient a uh, reverse epidemiology is seen that is the obese patient or patient with higher uh, bmi they fare well on the hemodialysis as compared to the patient with lower bmi uh, because uh, uh, yes sir they have a better cardiovascular survival patients with higher bmi why no hemodialysis patient do better if they are obese yes sir hemodialysis patient do better if they what are about obese. pd sir pd uh, sir pd also because sir uh, there are loss of protein and the albumin losses in the pd patient so if they have a uh, higher uh, if, if they have a good muscle mass and a uh, matlab a good bmi then they will survive better than the patient who are lean and thin no in fact this obesity paradox is not seen in pd because it gets neutralized by the metabolic complications because of hyperglycemia okay hyperglycemia yes how will you dispose of beds what advice you will give to the patient to dispose of beds sir uh, what are the components of pd first you have you seen all components of pd the four components of pd sir, all sir components there is are the things required in a pd patient sir there is a dialysate bag then there is the uh, catheter and a connector and then there is a drain bag sir any other thing you what is what is the transfer set sir transfer set sir these are connectors sir transfer set a uh, bi shape transfer it, it, set it is, there is nothing like connector transfer set transfer what set. is the what is the covering the transfer set what is that called sir covering the transfer set sir mini tap mini tap have you seen mini tap yourself no sir sir i told you sir we have not done pd in our center so the the practical aspects we are not aware of sir it's just better no, but why why you didn't see this patient doing pd pd exchange sir because before we could start uh, ask the patient to start the pd the patient took lama and went we were planning to shift the patient to the ward and start on pd before that the patient was in uh, was in icu undergoing hemodialysis because he was oxygen requiring sir but before we could ask the patient to do pd and we could see the the patient took lama and that's all sir so how do you dispose of the beds sir uh, uh sir we will ask the patient to uh, sir uh, every day 2 liter multiplied by 3 6 liter beds with all the tubings with mini taps so you have you have to give some advice to the or where 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 uh, you will ask them to throw first of all where will they drain the fluid so you Center. have cut with that uh, 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 with a scissors then uh, drain it in the uh, uh, toilet toilet, toilet yes. then beds you have to send to incinerator Yes, not that you have to just otherwise there can be uh, some spread of infections other thing yes, and uh, what how much is the loss of protein in a pd in 24 hours sir 1 to 2 1 2 grams 1 to 2 grams yes sir anybody in anybody in the chat box how much is the protein loss normal in capd in 24 hours uh-huh. 6 to 8 gram okay so 6 to 8 gram per day or even 5 to 10 gram so that 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 is the amount of protein loss okay in fact a lot of people have answered it rightly it can be 8 gram it can be 10 gram but definitely not 1 to 2 gram so 
So hemodialysis, how much is the loss? Some some idea in a hemodialysis per session, how much is the loss of protein? Again, chatbots. Okay, so one to two gram, that is the right answer. Okay, I think it is already now 7.30. Yes, sir. So I have advised this patient again to continue PD. Yes, sir. Three exchanges per day because patient doesn't want to go on hemodialysis. Yes, so I have continued the patient on 2.5% exchanges. Okay, sir. And uh, he is doing well. He doesn't want AV fistula as yes, usual. Sir. And he is a patient of cardiomyopathy. So I will be happy to continue on PD. Okay. Okay, sir. Now, actually, if uh, what is NIPD? Sir, nocturnal uh, intermittent PD, sir. Sir. Uh, no, it is it actual uh, term is nightly. Uh, night. Nightly intermittent peritoneal okay. dialysis, NIPD. When you do nightly, uh, how do you do nightly intermittent peritoneal with with what uh, apparatus? Yes, sir, with APD, sir, with the with cycler. automated cycler. dialyzer. Sir. So, cycler, the term is cycler. Cycler, yes, sir. I think I will, ask, ask, will have to ask you very, very basic questions now. What is the difference between CAPD and CCPD? Uh, sir, uh, CAPD is continuous ambulatory peritoneal dialysis, whereas uh, CCPD is continuous cyclic peritoneal uh, Okay. What is, what is so, it, tidal peritoneal dialysis? Sir, uh, tidal. Uh, sir, I had read it, sir. Uh, and what are the advantages of tidal PD? Uh, sir, uh, tidal. Uh, uh, just, just a minute, sir. Uh, sir, in tidal PD, the abdomen is not uh, uh, kept dry, sir. Uh, 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 some amount of fluid is uh, so kept in the abdomen. So about 300 to 400 ml of the fluid is yes. left in the peritoneal cavity yes. as a site is yes. all the time so that you don't have total <coughs> catheter pain. touching the membranes and causing pain. Pain. Okay, sir. And even drainage pain. problems. So that is not tidal PD. It has got advantage that pain is less. Pain is less. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, I think it is a ignored topic. So best yes. is that you must read PD. PD is an equally effective form of renal replacement therapy. Yes, Lot sir. of lives have been saved on peritoneal dialysis. And we used to do intermittent peritoneal dialysis acute PD. This we have saved thousands of lives with a hard st stiff catheter. Have you seen a stiff catheter? Yes, sir. I have seen. Where? Sir, actually, I was working as a SR in RML. So I had done acute PD with my senior sir. So okay. we had inserted a stiff catheter, the trocar, yes. uh, and uh, in the rectus sheet, and then it goes into the peritoneal cavity. We fill it with the fluid. And then the exchange okay. is done. Okay. Rapid exchange is done. Okay. Okay. Anyway, you must read PD in detail. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Hita Puneet. Thank you so much, sir. Students were lucky to have you today. The PD case authority in PD, <laughs> Dr. Balla is. <laughs> PD is a very specialty. Yes, sir. So coincident that the case was PD and you were faculty, sir. Yes, sir. Chalo. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. 